All right, so here we go. This is going to be lesson 15, vertex form. So what is vertex form? So we have quadratics, right? F, P, uh, G, and H, uh, Q, all six of these, all right? They are all quadratic, um, basically, because right away you can tell you have uh, x squared here. If you do x times x, you also get x squared. And then uh, if you do the x here and you foil out the x plus 2, you end up getting this, right? And you get those two x's to multiply uh, to get x squared as well. So they're all the same in sense of being quadratic, all right? So these are all quadratic. Now, vertex form, okay? So looking back at h of x, which was the x plus 2 squared minus 4, um, the x squared part, and let me highlight it here, the x squared, or x plus 2 squared, is the same as saying x plus 2 times itself, right? So x plus 2 times x plus 2. That's the same, same, right? Now if you distribute, and use the distributive property, uh, x times x gets you the x squared x times the 2 gives you the 2x, and let me use a different color here. The 2 times that x will give you 2x, and that 2 times that 2 will give you that 4. And don't forget that the minus 4 was there in the beginning, so he's just tagging on for the ride as everything gets distributed, and then he tacks in later. <clears throat> okay, so speaking of later, notice how this 4 cancels out with this 4, right? Because the 4 minus 4, right? And that's why there's nothing right here in terms of constant values. But one thing to realize is f of x is g of x, right? Because once you distribute that x, you get the same thing that's in f of x. Um, if you rewrite, or if you go ahead and uh, distribute the squared here, for h of x, you get exactly what we had for g of x. So notice how uh, function f, g, and h are all the same. They're just written differently. Now, to consider how efficient this video needs to be, I want you all to understand that this form is in standard form. OK? Uh, this form is what we like to call factored form because everything's already factored. You still got the parentheses, which means you haven't distributed. And this is the vertex form. I want you guys to know the vertex form is the one of the most efficient ways of uh, graphing uh, quadratic functions in the sense that they give you the vertex right away. And they also tell you a lot of other things. So let's go ahead and examine the other things, all right? So we're going to examine the graphs of both H and R. So let me get my highlighter here. I'm talking about H right here and R right here, OK? Um, one thing to note um, real quick is there's a stark difference between these two. Sure, they're both in vertex form, which we absolutely adore, right? Um, but what do you notice? Um, so go ahead and pause the video if you want and kind of notice what's the difference between H and R, okay? H of X and R of X. Okay, so hopefully you paused and um, kind of realized that they graphed them down here, didn't they? Um, do you notice how h of x is positive while r of x is negative? So there's no negativity symbol here, but wonk wonk, there's definitely a negativity symbol there. So that can tell you a lot about concavity. So concavity is basically, uh, to simplify it, smiley face versus frowny face. Okay, so if you're positive, which h of x is because there's no negative symbol there, so everything's positive, right? That's a smiley face. Negative, on the other hand, is concave down. So 
concave up will be smiley face, concave down will be uh, the negative uh, in the front or the sad face. Okay, so and what else do you see there numerically? What else does H and R have numerically different? Okay, so hopefully you th paused that and thought about it. Um, you would notice this, your vertex, right? Uh, the vertex form gives you literally what it's called, uh, the vertex, right? So negative two, comma, negative four, right? And hopefully you see those two numbers, right? You see that if you were to get a zero inside those parentheses, right, you have to plug in the opposite of plus two, which is negative two. And that's where they get the negative two from, okay? But the term on the outside, the minus four, um, it is quite literally whatever your y value is, which is minus four or negative four. Okay, now if you look at r, what's the opposite of positive or negative three? And hopefully you said positive three, right? Because if you plug in a positive, you get three minus three, which is zero, right? Um, and then the number on the outside is four, so your vertex should be three comma four. And you can test this idea with Desmos. Desmos is wonderful for this. So I highly recommend, especially for your homework, uh, your practice on your Google form, um, you can use Desmos, totally, all right? And you could definitely type these in. Doesn't matter what form they're in, but uh, for vertex form, you see it a lot clearly, or, or more clearly, I should say. All right, so playing with the parameters. This is something for mostly for you, okay? Um, Desmos is going to save you so much time, all right? Um, you have your parent function, right, which is a normal uh, quadratic function. Uh, its vertex is at 0, 0. And they said add different numbers to x before it's squared. So add a 4 inside, add a negative 3 inside, um, and record your observations. See what happens on Desmos. So go ahead and try plugging those in for Desmos and see what happens. Okay, so hopefully you paused and you typed those into Desmos, and you realize that uh, your parent function, right, it looks like this, and its vertex is at 0, 0, right, versus the x plus 4, which you should realize that you still have your parabola, except your vertex now is at negative 4, comma, 0. It probably shifted to the left four units, didn't it? But if you graphed the next one, you still have your parabola, except what's the opposite of negative three? Positive three. So your vertex is now at three comma zero. Hopefully you noticed that. All right, so go ahead and let's see what number two wants us to do. It wants to graph y equals x minus one squared, then experiment with the changes. So go ahead and change this number um, all the different ways until you start realizing the rule. Okay. All right. So, for example, um, oh, okay. So apparently, I'm misinterpreting what they wanted you to do. They didn't want you to necessarily uh, change what's inside there. We already did that with number one, didn't we? So I misspoke. They want you to add a number or take away a number on the outside and see what happens. So go ahead and do that. You still have the x minus one squared but you're just adding some number like plus five or minus nine. So go ahead and try those two on Desmos. Okay, so hopefully you try those on Desmos, okay? And you realize that this plus five makes a vertical shift up five units. Um, while this one took your entire parabola, um, down five units. So this was a vertical shift or BS vertical shift down nine units. Okay. F, uh, VS means vertical shift. Okay. That's where I got the VS from. All right. Multiplying. So go ahead, keep the X minus one squared, but then put a three in front of the parentheses and then a negative two and see what happens. 
Okay, so hopefully you did that on Desmos. And you realize the three here made your parabola three times skinnier than uh, or stretched than x minus one squared. Um, if you tried the negative two, hopefully you realized the negativity concaves you down, and then it makes you two times as skinnier uh, or stretched as the original x minus one squared. And you can see that a lot better with Desmos. So go ahead and try out these different uh, graphs or different functions using Desmos, all right? Make sure you record the coordinates of the vertex. Okay, for example, the first one I know right away, my vertex should be at negative 10 comma zero, and hopefully you see that on Desmos. Does the graph open up? or down. So this is talking about concavity. I notice it's a positive function. There's no negative symbol in there. So I definitely know that it opens up. All right. It looks like a smiley face. All right. So go ahead, use Desmos and finish the rest here. And just realize that the very last one is a general rule. Okay. Typing that in is probably not going to yield some kind of response. Um, just remember, uh, if your a value here, okay, is positive, it concaves up. So positive one, positive two. If it's negative, it concaves down. Um, if it's a minus some number, it'll take you to the right, okay, if it's negative. But if it's positive, it'll take you to the left. Um, the n value, if it's positive, it takes you up. And if it's negative, it takes you down. So those are the general rules that you realize as you go through Desmos and you start typing these in and seeking what information shows on the graph. All right, that is the end of the lesson. You have a wonderful day.